Okay, it's 6.05 now, so we're going to go ahead and start talking. I feel so far away from y'all that <laughs> um, the cord is very short that plugs the uh, program into the wall, so I'm going to sit back here. I'm sorry I can't get up and walk around with you. Um, I've hurt my knee, so if y'all don't mind, I'm just going to sit down here and talk. If you have any questions, just let me know. Um, this program was created by Emily Burnett down in Raleigh. She actually had this job before I did. Um, she works for the Department of Environmental Qu Quality at the Capitol. And uh, she made this to help educate the people throughout the state of North Carolina. Now, what I do, my job title is the um, Recycling Coordinator for Jackson County. Um, I work um, in the Department of Solid Waste, and um, Anya over here works for Jackson County, too, and um, she and Lauren asked me to come and do another program. We had one earlier, um, was it late last year, I think, and um, there were a lot of people there, so anyway, we don't have quite as many, but that's okay. <laughs> Um, let's go to this next slide here. Okay. Now this is our logo for this year. Um, those of you who come to Greening Up the Mountains and come by my booth will see this. I will have a lot more stuff out. Uh, but anyway, Recycle Right North Carolina is a statewide anti-contamination campaign. Um, and the purpose is to educate the public about contamination and recycling and how to recycle correctly. And we're doing this program also to counteract some of the confusing and negative press that recycling is getting. Now I know that some of you here will want to share this information with others. Um, so visit the Recycle Right NC website where you can find materials, order customized outreach materials, materials for schools and children, recycling facts, press releases, and a MRF video. How many of y'all know what a MRF is? Yeah. <laughs> okay, Lauren. <laughs> a MRF is a materials recycling facility, or it can also be called a uh, materials recovery facility, and it's where they actually work on the things that are being recycled. Okay. There's also a Facebook page that you can look up, but um, anyway, I went to this page and there's lots of material there for you. Okay, well, let's get into this. This is a linear model of the make, use, and dispose way of thinking. Now, during the industrial boom and a little later than that, um, you know, we just never gave a thought to running out of resources or thing, the earth becoming polluted from the things we made. We assumed that the earth could just provide us with infinite materials, and after we were done, we could just throw it away and buy more. And you know what? Lots of people still think like that. Uh, but now there's some of us becoming aware that we can't go on like this and are realizing we're going to have to change perceptions and behaviors. So... Once people begin to realize that our method is unsustainable, another model began to evolve, and that's the circular economy. Now, with this, we keep resources in use for as long as possible. We can extract the maximum value from the items while they're in use and then recover and regenerate products and materials at the end of each service life. So the circular economy has evolved to reduce, reuse, recycle, and recover. 
Now, we're used to those three R's, but now we've added a fourth. We don't just have the reduce, reuse, recycle. We need to add recover in there with it. By the time 2050 gets here, or 20, 2050, <laughs> um, we're going to have 9 billion people on this earth. Um, we just can't keep going like we have. Um, during the 20th century, resource use increased by 800%. And... We're, the earth is just not capable of providing us with that. In fact, we're using more every day than the earth can give us. And two-thirds of that winds up in a landfill. Okay. So... Your role in the circular economy. The consumer plays a fundamental role at every stage. Okay. Um, at the place of purchase, we need to start thinking about what happens before the disposal stage. Now, this is just something to think about. But you might want to go through the questions of do I really need this? Do I need a bag to get it home? What am I going to do with it? What am I going to do with the bag? And how can it be used again later? And after that point, can it be recycled? Or can somebody else get some use from it? These are things we're going to have to start thinking about as we purchase. We need to change our habits so we can start using less. And like I said, this is just something to think about. So let's look at what's in your garbage can. So we see that we have compostables, we have problem materials with garbage, and then we have recyclables. So what do you do with your food waste? Well, we compost it. Okay, uh, 30 to 50 percent of our, our food waste is compostable, and to learn more about that, um, you can call the Jackson County Center of, for the North Carolina Cooperative Extension at 586-4009, or you can call Adam Bigelow and Kirk Collins at the Jackson County Health Department, and that is 586-8994, okay. But what about the rest? Why should we recycle everything? Well, Recycling keeps us from using too many of the Earth's natural resources. Various amounts of energy are saved, depending on what the recycled material is. Greenhouse gases are reduced by limiting the need to produce virgin materials. It puts a check on the amount of materials left in landfills where greenhouse gas emissions are produced as they break down and it cuts down on the trash in our environment. Okay. Now, we actually can save money recycling. It's expensive, but it can be done. Um, a well-run recycling program can cost anywhere between 50 to more than $150 per ton, whereas trash collection and disposal programs can cost 70 to $200. Um, in recycling, jobs are also provided by collection, sorting, and processing activities, and in operations, sales, and logistics support. We have so many trucks coming through the Jackson County Transfer Station every day. Um, just from uh, 
the company that we contract with to pick up the trash bins at the schools, um, at the hospitals, um, at Western Carolina University. Um, and those jobs are for recycling. Now, why you should be a good recycler? Um, things don't break down in the landfill very well. Does anybody know why? It's sealed, exactly right. Air can't get to it, but it'll give off greenhouse gases for years on end. Um, now, another reason to be a good recycler is people on the sorting line. We talked about this in my first program. Um, they get exposed to dangerous pathogens and the repetitive motion for tiny things Make, puts them at high risk for injury. So when we practice efficiency with good recycling skills, we'll get a better return on the investments. And you think, how do you get an investment in recycling? Well, well, we'll find out here in a few minutes. Okay. How many of you have ever heard of wish cycling? Yeah. <laughs> That's when you pitch something in the recycle bin in the hopes that it can be recycled. <laughs> uh, for instance, uh, an extension cord. <laughs> um, it's covered in plastic, right? So let's recycle it. Well, you know what? There's a lot of metal wire in that thing, too. And that wire's going to get in those uh, recycling machinery, and it's going to tangle it up, and the machine's going to stop. Somebody's going to have to crawl in there and get it out. So uh, let's, let's not do any wish cycling. So if you're in doubt, throw it out, okay? If it's just killing you and you want to recycle it, call me. You can reach me at 586-7509. And if it's recyclable, I'll tell you. If it's not, I'll tell you to throw it out, Okay. All right, how many of you are confused about what to recycle? Yeah, a lot of people are. Yeah. Well, you know what, it's just not standardized. Um, and that makes it hard on everybody. Recycling is, is uh, actually a grassroots effort. So it starts in every community, right? and every community starts it differently. So, um, sometimes a government or a private business will invest in a recycling entity once it's gained enough attention in the community. And then different people will be over these community uh, businesses, recycling businesses, and they'll all make different decisions. So they're all run differently. Okay. Um, Another reason it's um, confusing, technology continues to improve. We've had something go on here in our own county. We've had to stop taking shredded paper. And that is because the MRF that we send it to in Asheville, which is curbside recycling, they bought new equipment, a new recycling machine. And that shredded paper gets in there and gums it all up and shuts it down, somebody has to crawl in there and pick it out, so they just don't take it anymore. Okay, and this happens every time new technology comes along, either we can start taking something, like we've recently, well, last fall, we're, we were able to start taking um, juice cartons and milk cartons, whereas we hadn't been able to do it before. Now we can, as long as there's not too much wax on it. Um, but we've had to stop taking shredded paper. So recycling is not a consistent idea. It, things are going to be changing all the time. Um, let's see. Also, the markets change. Sometimes we can sell things and sometimes we can't. So if we can't sell it, guess what? They're going to stop taking it. Um, 
For instance, if somebody says, well, I can't sell these juice cartons anymore, so I'm going to stop taking them. Okay. Um, all right. Well, what makes something recyclable? You'd never guess that all this goes into recycling. <laughs> um, actually, where you are has a lot to do with it, where you're actually located. Well, we just talked about the technology and what items have value in the market. Um, so, we talked a few minutes ago about um, different areas having their own way of recycling because it sprung up in a different, well, different area. Um, so, different areas have different technology. For instance, we can't recycle uh, styrofoam here. But there's a styrofoam repacking plant somewhere around Greenville, North Carolina. Of course, that's at the other end of the state. Um, so that's, that's just a, a, an example of how recycling is not standardized anywhere. Um, and since all operations are different, they're going to evolve differently. And the big thing is to currently there aren't any national laws pertaining to recycling. So it's very much a local thing. And contamination. What's contamination in recycling? Well, that's when wrong materials are put into the system and when right materials are put in the wrong way. Okay, so for example, we were talking about an extension cord a minute ago and the plastics bin. You can't do that. Um, when food residue is left in containers, that's contamination. Um, plastic bags hold in the containers to be put into the recycling bins. Um, each time contamination occurs, it actually lowers the price. This is, a, this is a marketable product now. It lowers the price of the bale that's going out. Okay? Um, for instance, if you have a bag full, plastic bag full of uh, plastics, uh, plastic food containers, you can't just pitch the plastic bag and all into the recycling bin. You've got to empty the plastic bag and then go put the plastic bag somewhere else. Generally, in, in Jackson County, there's a trash can at the end of every bin, or if not, go throw it into the compactor, because there's no place to recycle plastic bags here. Oh yeah, shopping bags, Ingles and Food Lion and Walmart, I believe. Actually, I was visualizing the trash bags. <laughs> okay. Um, contaminants actually are hard on people, they're hard on the process of recycling, and they're hard on the price of recycling. So uh, plastic bags, as I've got here, talked a minute ago about the recycling machinery. They get in there and they wrap around the shafts and the axles and the sorting machines, and they endanger the workers. The machines have to stop. Like I said, somebody's got to get in there, pull all that stuff out. Um, so that makes it hard on the people. Um, the time and energy. That machine is shut down. It is not working. So it's hard on the process. Okay, or when it's in the process of breaking down, that's hard on the process there. Um, also, like I said, um, if contaminants get into the recycled materials bail, it brings down the price. So things like hoses, uh, charging cords for your phone, uh, computer wires, plastic bags, Christmas lights, all of that can cause serious damage to uh, the machinery in recycling.
Where'd my little arrow go? There it is. Okay. So let's talk about recycling basics. Well, here in Jackson County, the basics are plastic bottles, tubs, jugs, and jars, metal cans, and glass bottles and jars. And all, those can all go into the same bin. Now, paper, cartons, and cardboard go into the mixed paper for the fiber bin. Okay, we do not have single stream recycling in Jackson County. It's just too messy, and so we have a bin for paper products, and we have a bin for containers. Okay. Yes. If it's real shiny, <laughs> generally it's coated with plastic. Things like freezer boxes. Somehow, they've either mixed the plastic into the with the cardboard, or it's layered on top of the cardboard. That can't be recycled. Now that stuff soft, softer. If it can break down in water, that that's the tail and point. If it won't break down, it won't recycle. Okay. Um, yes. Um, I haven't heard that we've had problems with magazines. If the cover's real thick, you know, um, I, I don't get a lot of magazines at my house, but just tear off the cover if you think that it's not going to break down. Okay? Like I said, when in doubt, don't. Just go ahead and throw it away. Okay? Um, so, um, this pretty well uh, goes into detail here. Let's see, let me go on to this next slide. Um, well, anyway, y'all can see there, there's that big red rectangle down on the bottom that, of things that you keep out. And um, I have this material down here for you. Okay, after we're done, you can just come get some of it. Um, so don't put things in like uh, plastic bags. Paint cans, paint. We don't take liquid. Okay. If you've got paint cans or uh, what is that stuff that thins paint out, paint thinner, um, um, just put some kitty litter in it, some sand or some dirt, and stir it up and let it dry out. And we can take it then. Okay. Uh, and that will go on the floor, but we can't take it at all at the, at the um, transfer station. Okay. Okay, here we go. Shape and size. Um, plastics. So we get your um, mayonnaise jars, your soap jars, your milk jugs, water bottles, shampoo bottles, things like that. Those are all good. Okay, if you've got a cap on a soda bottle, just twist it back on, okay? Metal cans, that's fine, food cans. Um, glass jars and bottles. So we see something like diced pimentos would come in or, or um, salad cubes. There's a, a glass ketchup jar. I haven't seen one of those <laughs> in a while. Uh, and there's your um, spirits bottles also. Okay. Now those first three, plastic, metal, and glass, now can all go in the same bin. Okay. But paper needs to go in this separate bin. Now let's look down here on the bottom. Um, things like plastic, um, those six-pack rings, we can't recycle those. We can't recycle those plastic pouches that some, some children's drinks comes in. Um, or 
Well, there's frozen foods come in those things too. Um, we can't recycle things like uh, single-use plastics like straws or fast food drinks. We can't do those. Um, now, in the recycling, uh, the metal recycle, we can't take ladders or pots and pans or um, coat hangers, but we can take it in the scrap there, the, the scrap metal at the transfer station. Okay, it just won't go into the recycle bin. Okay, um, glass, glass objects tend to uh, confuse a lot of people. If it's Pyrex, if it's uh, drinking glasses or crystal, or it's window glass, you can't recycle that. And the reason is because it's different melting temperatures for all of that, okay? So just those items like that, just throw them away. There's nothing we can do with them, <laughs> okay? And then um, shredded paper, a little... Uh, um, sugar substitutes or, or little pieces of packing paper, those are too small. The machines will never get them. Um, that's interesting because, you know, I've always done questions, so, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, just uh, don't. Yeah, um, just don't tear it up. And, and the little sweetener packets, they're lined with plastic. I mean, so we can't take it anyway. Okay. I have a question about the plastics. You know, on things that are recyclable, it has the symbol. Yeah, we'll go over that. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yes, sir? Um, well, actually, they're not recyclable. Yeah, they are not because. One side of the paper is something that, that we can't break down somehow. I don't know why. I, I've just read that. Okay. I have two questions for you. Um, the six-pack rings, uh -huh. um, and some of these newer ones, they make like hard plastic ones. Uh -huh. They have a recycling symbol on it. Do you know if those are recyclable? Well, if it's not a number three or a number six, we can recycle it. Number three and number six, we can't recycle here in Jackson County. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, just wash it off and, and put it down in the can and send it on. Okay. And also, sorry, I have That's okay. <laughs> um, I think you had mentioned in the last one that you're supposed to take the, the cap off the glass bottle. I have. Fill the case. Yeah. Glass bottle jars. Yeah, just take that off. On the, the plastic bottles and things, just put the lid back on them. No, on the paper cartons that are coated in the Oh, glass. oh, they're paper. Yeah, take those lids off and just throw them away. Okay. And, and the reason to throw them away is because they're little. The machines can't get them. Okay. Okay? And then if, you said that as long as they're not covered in too much wax. Yeah, the, they used to be covered in big-time wax. Um, I don't see a lot of cartons anymore that have that. So uh, right now we're taking that stuff, uh, and we have not received any calls from the facility in Asheville saying that we're getting too much of this stuff. So um, if something's wrong, they'll let us know, okay? <laughs> sure, I hope that helped answer your question there. Okay, well, let's talk about some recycling language, okay? Um, like that big old red chair, though, there. We, you know, everybody has a few of those sitting around on the back porch or something. Those can't be recycled because it's um, hard plastic. We, um, kids' toys, you know, like Fisher Price, um, the kitchens or, or whatever they have, we can't recycle those. There's no place around here that will take that type of plastic. Um, the plastic coat hangers, we can't recycle those. It's the same stuff. So um, 
just either clean them up and keep using them or maybe try to take it to a thrift store. I know that those plastic chairs can get pretty dirty. A uh, power washer will take that stuff right off. Okay. Um, now, the gable top cartons. Do you see what I'm talking about there? Um, aseptic cartons. All right. And the clamshells. How many of you all knew those little plastic things were called clamshells? Uh, I thought that was pretty neat. If it's got the right numbers on it. <laughs> yeah, if it's not a three, I mean, if it's a three or a six, we can't do it. Okay, um, cleaning it out. Yes, rinse it out. It doesn't have to be dishwasher clean. Um, just rinse it out. If it's really caked in some kind of substance, yeah, be a good recycler, kind of clean it up a little bit. We're not saying they have to be spotless, but you don't want it to be real yucky either. Um, peanut butter, um, as long as most of the peanut butter's out, uh, what I do is um, I just let it fill the jar up with water and let it sit overnight. Okay. Um, and remember, the more you clean, the less germs that the workers are going to be exposed to. Yes, sir. What about lids for those kinds of containers, peanut butter jars, mayonnaise jars? They're often not labeled with any type of plastic. If it's plastic and it's on a plastic jar, just screw it back on the top of it. Okay. If it's a metal jar, I mean a metal lid on a glass jar, um, take that off. Okay. Because they use magnets and, and uh, some kind of software that recognizes shapes. and. and I haven't been there yet, but I'll be going to the facility over there in Asheville. It's called Curbside, if any of y'all are interested, and they do, they do give uh, tours. I've done one. It was very interesting. I, I highly recommend it. Okay. Um, these are things that are classified as hard to recycle. Um, we will be having a hard to recycle day here in Jackson County. But right now, if you and maybe some of your neighbors want to get all your little things like this, um, the squirter thing, <laughs> the spray uh, thing, um, toothpaste tubes, things like that, they do take them in Asheville once a month. Okay? And if you'll just call me, I can get that information for you. And the reason why is they can't separate that stuff. Okay, here we were talking about the numbers, okay? Um, just because the item has the recycle symbol on it, it doesn't mean that it can be recycled everywhere, okay? Um, here in Jackson County, like I said, we cannot take number three or number six. Um, it's only accepted if the recycling center can sort that item and if it has market value. So we're, we're very lucky here in Jackson because over there in one of our, uh, well, not neighboring counties, but a little further west, they can only take number two still. So, so we are very fortunate. All right, people used to flatten out the uh, soda cans. You don't have to do that anymore. Um, Technology is advanced enough to where it can do, like I said, uh, recognize the cans and things. Um, just make sure that it's not coated with plastic or wax. Okay. Uh, let's see. We talked about this a minute ago. Can't be recycled at all. Okay, so... Um, a lot of people will buy a metal straw at Walmart, okay? Um, the coffee cups, they're, they're just made with a different assortment of materials that cannot be separated once they're put in the recycling. It can't be separated at all. So uh, just throw them away. Size has a lot to do with it. Now, um, 
the little things, like we said, and not only puts the, the workers at high risk for injury, okay, the, um, the machines can't pick it up. Um, and by pick it up, I mean they can't see it, and they can't, it falls down through the cracks and everything. Um, things like ladders, go ahead and put into the uh, scrap metal bin. Okay, now, uh, we're getting there, we're getting there, y'all. <laughs> Okay, uh, know your nose. Okay, uh, so bagged recyclables. Can you just pitch that bag into the bin? No. <laughs> no. Um, if you want to get the guy mad. Yeah. The <laughs> there we go. Um, also, rinse your food containers out. Like I said, they don't have to be dishwasher clean, but... but do you, you know, get it, get them to where it's not going to be a whole lot of germs in there. Because that, boy, the food is what makes everything smell bad. You know, once it starts decomposing, and it don't take long, um, just keep that out of the, the recycled stuff. Okay, um, no plastic wrap. Anything that's like film. So we know about the plastic bags, right? But what about bubble wrap? All kids just love bubble wrap and popping all those little bubbles. Um, the plastic that comes around your paper towels. Um, and also the, the, well, it's big bubble wrap like Amazon uses to send you things, okay? Also, now we talked about syringes uh, in my last program. Um, take your syringes and your sharps. Make sure the medication is out of them. Take a liquid laundry bottle if you have it because that plastic is thick. Okay, put all of those down in there. When it gets full, take the cap, screw it on as tight as you can, then tape the cap down. And then take some masking tape or something, white athletic tape, whatever, and write sharps on that. Take it to your local SRC and give it to the attendant. Okay, we want to make sure those things get um, disposed of properly. Okay, um, and we talked about paint cans a minute ago. We don't take liquids. Um, if it's out, if the paint is gone, fine. Um, it could just go in the trash, but it can't be recycled. Okay, now um, we'll talk about the. Re, um, antifreeze in just a minute. Uh, paper towels and tissue can actually go into the compost heap. Okay. Does it matter if it's bleached or unbleached? Not that I know of. Like I say, you might want to talk to Kurt or Adam about that. Um, I am by no means um, uh, so composter. Really? If you're not a prop, if you're not a purist about that, I've been putting paper towels and coffee filters in my own compost pile for ten years, and the compost pile is this hot, so they completely decompose. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Um, now here in Jackson County, we don't have anybody who can take clothes. Okay, it can't be recycled. So what do we think about? We think about reuse or find another way to um, a repair, yes, I'm thinking about donate it to, uh, if it's gently used, donate it to a local thrift store. But also, if you know anybody who's into quilting, y'all know what I'm talking about, and people who quilt, uh, I know there's some ladies in some churches who get together and do that. See if they would be interested in some of your scraps. I have some quilts from my, that my grandmother made. Now, I do not have patience for anything that tedious, but I know a lot of women do. Um, they just love it. They find it very relaxing. And they might be able to use your scraps. And um, that way, they don't have to go buy new material. Crazy quilts um, can be made with any kind of material, as far as I know. Um, scrap metal, silverware, 
coat hangers, old clips, and um, pots and pans. Just put it in there. Okay, it can't be recycled. And there again, we're talking about the things that tangle up the, the recycling machinery. Okay, keep those out. All right. Now we're getting into Jackson County. We haven't got many more to go. I promise. I know it's probably a little boring. Okay. Um, now I've made this part. Um, Emily made that other part there. I tweaked it a little bit for Jackson County. But anyway, um, this is going to be specific for us, okay? Um, our director is Chad Parker. And he works at the Skyland Services Center and Suite 4. His phone number is 586-2437. Um, and you can reach him at chadparker at jacksonnc.org. Now, the solid waste department, um, generally we're at the transfer station, okay? We are open from 7 to 4, Monday through Friday, and then from... 7 to 12 on Saturdays, and that's where I work, okay? And you can reach me at 586-7509, and my email is kimshuler at jacksonnc.org. Now, the county has a website, jacksonnc.org, and you can go there and find solid waste, and there's all kinds of information there for you. Okay? Um, in fact, we've updated the list of stuff that we can take. Um, and if you have any questions, just give us a call. It, me or Chad, he's real friendly. Um, okay, we're going to go through stuff we take. Okay, so we take aluminum, um, scrap metals. Uh, we even take aluminum siding. Okay, now it doesn't go into the recycle bin, but we can take it at our facility at the transfer station, okay? We take antifreeze at the Cashers and Dillsboro SRCs, okay? Um, all of our SRCs have appliances, uh, have, have bins for appliances where you can take your old refrigerator, your old washing machine. If it still works, donate it to United Christian Ministries. Okay, um, or your favorite thirst store. Yes, sir. We have a large copier. A large copier. We do take electronics. Where? We take could electronics. We, could we take it to the SRC and put it in the um, As far as I know, you might want to call me back tomorrow and I can ask my boss, okay? I haven't been in this job a year. I'm not going to say that everything I say is written in stone. I'll give you <laughs> Okay, <laughs> my business card's right up here, too. Okay, um, and asphalt. We take asphalt in our construction and demolition, and, uh, but we want to encourage you to use it as beneficial landfill on your own property if you need it. Um, we take bar and restaurant recycling. Um, now, all of our SRCs can take alkaline batteries, but if you have a car battery or something different, bring it down to the transfer station. And that's on Mineral Springs Road, um, down there right below uh, the old Scotts Creek School. That's the Jackson Community School now. Um, we take books. That goes in the mixed paper. You can just toss a paperback book right in there. But if it's a hardback book, rip those covers off. Put those in the trash and throw the rest of the paper in with the mixed paper. And we also take that chance. Friends of the Library is also a great okay, place to yeah. take, which helps benefit our local library where we're doing this right now. Absolutely. It's not dirty and it doesn't stink. Yeah. Not eat up with the silverfish. <laughs> if it is dirty or it stinks, take it to the SRC. That's it. That's it. <laughs> because I haul it to the SRC myself. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Friends of the Library is a good organization. Uh, my mom's eyes are getting bad enough now to where she has to have large print to read, and she is a voracious reader, and I'm able to buy her large print stuff there. Okay, now, I told you we take electronic equipment, um, and one of the pictures up here is um, of a computer. Now, if you have an old computer, 
don't, don't pitch it out. Uh, disability partners uh, will take your old computer and refurbish it, and they will give it to one of their special needs clients, okay? So it can still get some further use. I mean, you're not going to get any money for it, but it will still be able to be used by someone, okay? Um, and they take other electronics also here at the um, SRCs and the transfer station. We take fluorescent bulbs. Don't tape them together, okay? Uh, the glue uh, kind of messes with the, the outer coating of it there. We take furniture, old furniture, take mattresses, um, all glass, um, well, glass bottles and things for recycling, but you can put glass into the compactor. No, we actually take them somewhere. I'm not real sure where it goes, but um, just bring them down to the transfer station if you want, and um, we'll, those boys will do what they're supposed to with them. I don't know where they take them yet, so. But yeah, we do take them. Okay. Um, I don't know. Um, just ask. Um, or give me a call and I'll find out tomorrow, okay? Or send me an email or something. Um, like I was talking about a little while ago, we take scrap metal. We take steel cans. We take mercury thermostats. Okay. And mixed paper, of course, goes into the uh, mixed paper bins. We take used motor and cooking oils. Um, now, that stuff is recycled, Okay. Um, now, these are only taken at the Cashers SRC, the Cullowhee SRC, and the Dillsboro SRC. Uh, the transfer station can take used motor oil, but not the cooking oil. Okay? All right. Of course, we take plastic containers. Okay? We also take tires. Um, they take those off downstate somewhere to be recycled. And we take yard waste, uh, brush, things like that. Uh, we have a brush, uh, no, not brush, mulch pile, okay? Uh, we will sell you a front-end loader scoop of mulch for $10. Now, you can't beat that with a stick. I'm not going to say it's as good as what you'll buy at Lowe's or something. But it's mulch and it will do the job. I have a question about the yard waste. So if I'm bringing a bunch of leaves, um, tell me how I should bring them. Leaves? Yeah, leaves. Leaves. You want to cover the bed of your truck if they're in that. Okay, because they'll blow out. Okay. I will put them in the trunk of your car. Then you'll just go across the scales and tell the uh, scale clerk what you have. Okay? And then she'll... And then uh, yeah, there, just go around to the brush pile. Yeah, you'll stay to the far left over there. You'll see it as you go by. Okay? <laughs> Can't miss it. Um, pallets we can take also. As long as it's not got paint on it, we can grind that up and put it in the mulch pile. Okay? Now, we're about to the end. Okay. Now the top 10 takeaways. In Jackson County, there's four basic categories of accepted materials for recycling. Okay, Plastic, metal, some glass, and paper. Remember, we want to keep out our Pyrex, our crystal, and our window glass. Okay. Now, when in doubt, throw it out or call me at 586 7509. If I don't know the answer, I promise I'll find it for you. Okay? Um, now, you are the first sorter of your recyclables. So, practice responsible recycling. Okay? Um, remember that contamination can hurt people. Um, it can damage the machines and lower prices. Um, and People may not understand, but that's how 
Jackson County Solid Waste works is we uh, support ourselves from what people have to pay to bring stuff in and what we are able to sell. Okay? I'm sure the county supports us a little bit. Most of our, our funding comes from what we're able to take in. Okay, um, reduce your single-use plastics and, and make better consumer decisions about do I need this, or do I need a bag to get it home type thing, okay? Um, again, if you have questions, don't, don't sweat it. Just give us a call. If I'm not there, there's other people that work there too. <laughs> Debbie's there. She's the scale clerk. And then um, there's four other people that work there. There's someone always in the office. Um, the recycling numbers three and six are not taken at Jackson County. Okay, you just have to throw them in the trash. Um, visit the website NC Recycle Right. Okay, um, you can visit Jackson County website, and that's jacksonnc.org. Uh, know your nose, what not to recycle. Don't put trash in the recycling. And that's all I have. Does anybody have any questions? Yes. Noises are being made, and if it gets loud enough, I'm sure that people are going to start listening. You're always free to request paper bags at, at these stores. It's just a matter of educating people, and because I'm sure people just don't realize how many plastic bags leave Walmart on a daily basis. You can leave Walmart with four items and six bags. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. I am sure. And so you think that all those stores now, like Ingalls, Walmart, the grocery stores, have paper bags that you could also get? Um, I know that some of them do. I can call around. I would encourage you to call them. Okay. And ask, do y'all have paper bags if we prefer those? Or, you know, what a lot of people do is take their own uh, shopping bags. And yes, ma'am. Yeah, the, oh, I was just going to say that Ingalls bag costs less than $2. Uh-huh. Oh. Yeah, and in Walmart, if you buy one of their, it's like, you know, ones that they made out of recycled plastic. It's like a doctor. Yeah. And if you really want to get adventurous, you could call it Jackson County Transit and take a transit to the grocery store and they will give you two shopping bags um, to go shopping with and those bags hold 30 pounds of groceries a piece okay and plus you'll get to meet some new people <laughs> i have some questions too about community our, our community like when you think about like the plastic straw I mean, is there any initiative in our county to start doing simple things like that, like encouraging restaurants to try to get some other alternatives? Why don't you talk to her, Anya? Um, something that we're trying to work on as a sustainability council is to get businesses to be more sustainable like that. Um, there's only so much we can do, but what we are trying to start encouraging is um, the NC Green Travel Certification. Um, multiple businesses can get that, restaurants, hotels, places like that, and um, Baxley Chocolates um, and City Lights Guadalupe, they have that. And um, I don't know of an initiative like that here, but at the coast they have one, um, and it's like they hand out, like customers will hand out business cards kind of to restaurants that will say, you know, please only offer straws on request or something like that. Right. Um, and I think, you know, maybe in the future that would be a good idea for our community here too. So how does that start? It starts with 
the people. Sustainability, <laughs> I mean, you know, like it's your little group. Or yeah, maybe. I mean, right now, like our group just got started in August. Oh, okay. And um, our main focus right now is greening up the mountains, mm -hmm. um, which is a really big endeavor. But I do want to start on things like that later. Yeah. I would be interested in participating in something. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say at the end of this, we, we do have a Facebook page if you're on Facebook for Jackson County Sustainability Council. But if you'd like to see me, give me your email. Okay. Um, Anya um, is great. She sends um, out weekly ideas on way to re reduce and reuse. Um, and, and you could also get connected with us. I know for me personally, I've stopped patronizing a lot of businesses. Um, because of, of, of trying to make those changes. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like my, my dollar is one of the ways that I can vote against mm -hmm. that. So uh, there's, there's a lot of the fast food restaurants and things that I've just stopped frequenting and have made changes in going to places like City Lights in Guadalupe and, and, and businesses where I see the concern for that. I went to a restaurant today over in Waynesville and I needed it to go. And, and luckily they had cardboard, but almost every other restaurant in our town has styrofoam. Mm -hmm. So styrofoam, as far as recycling? We don't have a styrofoam recycling plant in our area, uh -huh. uh, way downstate. So it way can downstate. eventually be, okay, see I didn't even know that you could ever recycle. Yeah. Is it Kirk that does this? Um, yeah, and I'm I'm a little confused on that. I know uh, Kirk Collins has been taking it to Asheville, but then I recently heard that I'm not sure if Asheville's using that or not. Do you know? No, I have not heard. Um, okay. I do know he made a trip uh, about a month ago. Okay. He was going once every two months. That's part of the hard to recycle thing in Asheville. Um, I thought they were still taking styrofoam okay but it could have changed but he he has been taking it to Asheville like you know four times a year or something like that if you contact him at the health department and let him know that you have some items he'll work out getting it from you and getting it to Asheville um, he's volunteered to do that um, and that's what I'm trying to do with like the containers that I, you get at angles with meats that I can't avoid right. but one of the things that I've also done is is I've gone and gotten my own reusable container. And several area restaurants have been fine with taking that for to-go. Yeah, I do that. Rather, I do yeah, that. great, yeah. yeah. And I know at least three restaurants downtown and possibly a fourth are looking at a system where you could get a to-go container from them. And then when you go in, you would return it to them so they could sanitize it properly and then they would give you a new one and so you would have a deposit like a lot of the breweries do with growlers and things like that so we're they're working that's something we're all kind of working on right now what but idea. yeah yeah i think it's brilliant yeah i just wanted to add that uh, the Publix, at least one in waynesville and any others i've been to takes the uh, styrofoam food trays in egg cartons oh, yeah. they do they do okay yeah. wow Ever, it's, uh, Big, you know, been out front. Oh, good. Okay, that's wonderful. And see, that's where the grassroots community things come in because some people come in and share this information with us. Thank you so much. I, I was not aware of that. You said that was Publix? Yes. Yeah. Okay. You know, the other good thing about Publix when I've been over there, you know, always carry my bags with me. And half the time I forget them in the car. But out in the parking lot it, at Publix, it says, "Don't forget your, you know, like to bring your bag in." And I thought, "Oh, great!" You know, so I turned around and went back. It'll and only take five years to start remembering. <laughs> Another um, locally, the community table, clean single-use plastic bags, those T-shirt bags, they are often in the need of those. Because when their clients come in and are getting food, especially on the amount of food truck days where it's a lot of veggies and stuff, they're always in need for it. So you can always stuff a bag full of them and go by and talk to the tall guy with the distinguished forehead, mm -hmm. uh, meaning mostly bald. His name is Ski. And you say, Ski, do you need any plastic bags? Okay, so, and you're talking about the garbage or the, the plastic bags that people take from the grocery store. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay, I've got a question about large items. Um, for instance, the 107 construction project that's been going on for over a year towards cashers. Um, do any of those demolition materials make it to the transfer station or are they just going into a landfill? Um, they're not coming to our facility. We can't take really big stuff because well, we just don't have the means to transport things like that. So I imagine that um, it's going into uh, a truck bed and being taken somewhere where it's either busted up or it's going into a landfill somewhere. Yes. Many construction companies take both asphalt and cement to recycling companies. Mm -hmm. And the cement makes new cement, and the asphalt goes in back okay. to the asphalt factory. So it's getting reused. Real big cities. I saw a plant that was mobile, and it followed the project. Let's say tore up the the highway here, and uh -huh. went into here, and came out the other end, and went back uh -huh. to the cement company. Well, that is neat. Well, see, being so remote as we are here in Jackson County, we don't have access to a lot of that. We don't see it. So thank you for sharing that. Okay, is there any? Yes, ma'am. Sorry. No? <laughs> um, so, a lot of to-go containers I see are like these corn compostable things. Are those really compostable? Um, I, a lot of them are getting thrown out um, anyway, so I'm assuming they don't break down in the landfill since it's sealed. sealed up. There are, so there's been some research out there that a lot of these compostable containers contain PFAS in them. Um, which never breaks down in the environment. Yeah. <laughs> like styrofoam. Um, I I threw it in my compost before knowing that, and I wouldn't do it now. And that's Did why. Did it break down? Uh, though the container will break down, but the coating will yeah. have PFAS and it won't. Okay. Um, and so that's why we really want to start encouraging businesses to do the reusable takeout container thing because really I don't think there's going to be a good single use option for takeout. Right. Yeah. It seems crazy that they're spending extra on this when it's just getting thrown away anyway. And, and it's not safe to come. And anyway. there may be options out there that don't have that, but um, I'm not really sure. I'm not sure if it's widely available yet. So. And then, um, so, like, wire fencing and things like that, you can't take that even at the transfer station, is that what I'm... Wire fencing? Yeah, like old wire fencing or wire... Chain link fences? Uh, is that what you're talking about? It's more about? like chicken, chicken, chicken wire. Oh, chicken wire. No, I would think that we could take that. Uh, okay. Before we leave, everybody come down here and get one of my cards so you can call me and I can check all this stuff for you. Okay? Because I'm not, I'm not sitting there at the window when the trucks go by on the scales. So um, I don't know if they bring them in or not. So I will have to check on that. Okay. My last question. Sorry. Okay. I see three in a row. Um, is there any movement towards getting any community composting effort or through the restaurants or anything like that? Um, that's something that Adam Bigelow has started. Um, I don't know where that's at right now, but that's definitely like we've had a lot of people interested in that. So I definitely want to see that happen. Um, and also, you mentioned the chicken wire. Yeah. Is that in like good condition? Because I think you could probably. No, I've like, reused it many times, so it's all oh, just okay. like. Okay, I was going to say you might post it on Craigslist or something. <laughs> From yeah. old and rusty. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Adam runs it. Uh, he, he does the community garden. Yeah. Yeah. So he's, he's going to have a lot of answers for you. You could reach him to at the health department. So it's 586 Okay. Anything else? Y'all come down here. Oh, yes. I just want to confirm because I've been told different things. Okay. That number three, except for number three and number six, clamshell, the clear, hard plastic clamshell containers are currently recyclable. Yes, we can okay. take it. If it's not a number three or a number six, yeah. we can take it. Because even big cities that have big recycling programs don't take those many times. Well, they, until they tell us no. And I know for things like the strawberries and the yeah, um, yeah. blueberries, 
Um, some of the people at the farmer's market will reuse those, so that's another option as well. You can take it right. to the farmer's market and, and see if too, they, they need those. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I wonder if they're going to do uh, plant pot recycling again. Nice. You have to talk to them. Yeah. Lisa I'm probably and some nurseries would probably take those. I bet local nurseries would probably take those plant pots. I know, so. at the farmer's market, oh. a couple of years ago, they just had a big bin and said, Lowe's takes them. The black um, plastic liner, uh, Lowe's takes them. We brought them to a nursery once over in uh, Franklin, too, and they would accept them. We just had a whole bunch of them, and they were glad to accept them as long as they were in good shape. So. Right. Okay. All right, I want to remind you all that Green Up the Mountains is April 25th. Now, cleaning of the mountains will take place uh, a week prior to that from April 12th through the 18th. Um, if you want to get up a group to pick up the trash off of the road, it will have to be a secondary road, not a primary road. Um, Please call me. We'll fix you right up with vests and gloves and bags and everything. I did it this last time, <laughs> and I have to say, Kim has it so well planned out. She makes it very painless, and you feel really good after you've cleaned up the whole world. <laughs> and you get to wear a pretty vest. You do. Yeah, she's got these amazing <laughs> grabber things. I, I really <laughs> didn't want to get to that. All of those so people. Nice. Some people didn't bring them. I don't blame them. They were fabulous. <laughs> Okay, I want to remind you, come down please and get some material here. And please feel free to call me. If you have some news, I will be more than happy to take it and share it with everybody I know. Um, and if you've got questions about anything that has to do with the transfer station or the SRCs, call me. Okay? And I, I, sorry, I was also going to say, I want to thank Auburn for taping this. We will post that in our group once he gets that to us on Facebook or can email it. So if you have friends that weren't able to attend and you want to be able to share this with them, that will be available here shortly. Thank so, you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you.